nostra squadra ha catturato l'area! La squadra nemica ha catturato l'area! Welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we'll be looking at the current highest tier available Italian battleship at tier 9, the Lepanto. But before we look at the Lepanto, we actually have to look at tier 7 at the Francesco Caracciolo. Now, why are we doing that? Because uh, the, uh, the Caracciolo was designed by Admiral Edgardo Ferrati, and uh, Ferrati was also responsible for some other designs back in 1915, 1916, so at the onset of the First World War. And one of the designs is effectively what we'll see here. Well, not completely, but uh, this, is very much, this is very much based on, by the looks of it, on the Design D by Ferrati. And uh, it features quadruple turrets. So this was sort of this was sort of the Italian answer to what the French were doing with the Lyon. These, uh, he, he, I think, the tier ten is probably going to be based on one of his designs as well. Now, quadruple turrets didn't exist, and he, neither did the ship. Right. So this is a theoretical continuation of the uh, Vittorio Veneto class, and uh, sorry, of the Littorio class that where we have the Vittorio Veneto here in the game. And uh, is you know, a, a hypothetical ship, but it is, I think, based on a real design because it does look very suspiciously like the D design by Ferrati. Now the guns, well, the turrets didn't, but the guns did exist because this thing gets the exact same guns as the Littorio class, the 381 millimeter guns. And uh, these are, these actually, these these were actually, I've, I've had I've had a look at the encyc encyclopedia. <laughs> These these were actually, I think, one of the longest, if not the longest range guns in um, at the time, because these things had a range that would uh, that exceeded that of Yamato's 460 millimeter guns. So uh, these were due to their extremely high muzzle velocity and their 50 caliber length. These were capable of um, of firing at ranges of up to 42 kilometers, which is very very long. <laughs> so. Uh, not quite sure why we're seeing the Italian battleships with relatively short base ranges, but um, you know it's it's sort of it's it's sort of compensated by the float planes. But uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So yeah, this ship didn't exist, so there's not much more we can do to say about it. But what we can do is clear this up and actually compare her to the Vittoria Veneto because uh, it's obviously her immediate successor. We are getting uh, the Fuel Smoke 3, which gives us 20 seconds of smoke screen, which is actually would be a lot for a normal smoke screen almost. And we're getting the Scout Plane 2, which gives us a mine gun range increase of 16%. Other than that, obviously, we get semi armor piercing shells as well. And um, I. I, I did realize that last time during editing that uh, that the semi armor piercing actually can't overpenetrate. <laughs> I mean, I've always noticed it, but I was always a bit surprised by it because you know, 
they especially with large calibers they should have been if they were over penetrating they should have probably at some point over penetrated destroyers as well but in the game mechanics no the semi-armor piercing cannot over penetrate so <laughs> you only can do semi-pen full pen and bounce which explains why these things are so deadly against destroyers but that aside um the Lepanto doesn't have an awful lot of hit points, and that is true pretty much for the rest of the ships here as well. 51,000 is relatively far at the low end of the scale, but uh, the armor plating is actually not bad. Uh, the 16.5% damage reduction and uh, a 30% torpedo damage reduction. So this is once more the uh, Pugliese uh, 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 torpedo defense system in, in practice here that had these huge drums at the side with with empty air gaps that would contain the blast. They would trigger the torpedoes on the outer hole and then contain the blast such that the inner hole wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be penetrated by the torpedoes. The Lepanto is quick, just like the Vittorio Veneto, uh, and uh, ever so slightly, well, well, it is pretty much similar in terms of maneuverability. The rudder shift is actually faster, which is ever so slightly slower in the turn, but still, uh, this is a much, I think this is a much larger ship. Yeah, she's definitely, um, she's definitely a tad larger than that. So uh, that is very welcome, the maneuverability. And if we're looking down further, we see, yes, the trusty 380 millimeter guns that we have in here. Now this is tier nine and uh, 300. Do we have anything else in this tier that has this caliber? The French maybe, I can't remember. Let me have a very quick look. Um, who else uh, would be um, would be the uh, Alsace? What's what's the gun caliber on the Alsace? Is it, we've got so many ships. Yeah, the Alsace also gets gets 12, 380 millimeters. So so that's uh, that, that's pretty similar here. But uh, we don't know yet about tier ten. And if it follows PC, then it's going to be um, the it's going to be 16, 16 guns of the same caliber. So back to the comparison here. And yes, the range is a bit is a bit better, but other than that, they're exactly the same guns. Now, thirteen point six kilometers is not long for uh, for a gun range, and especially for a gun that in practice was one of the, if not the longest range battleship uh, gun back out, out there at the time. And also, we've lost the second and reload. I mean, that's fair enough. They're quad turrets, so um, I, I guess that's that that's okay. Yeah, other than that, damage-wise, they are pretty much the same, which means that you are on a relatively low caliber uh, for for that for the tier, because you are going to be facing tier ten ships, obviously, and uh, 380 millimeter, but they still are the very very have very very high penetration, also probably down to the muzzle velocity uh, that we've all, we got used to from the from the tier eight. The secondaries, we've gained some. Other than that, they're completely identical. So we now have six triple turrets uh, of secondaries. So you get, you get a fair amount of guns on either side. And the 90 millimeter auto secondary dual purpose guns have also uh, been doubled because they are now twin turrets. They're not gonna do an awful lot of damage, but you know, once again, they're there, we take them. The AA has been upgraded to what I would almost call acceptable level. Still doesn't mean the thing can defend itself from aircraft, but uh, barely compensates for the increase in, in, in hit points that the get, aircraft get. And the surface detection is still very, very good. So um, this is an interesting combo. Now, what can we do with it? You can either further improve the torpedo damage reduction for another 3% if you wanted to, but uh, with a 24 second base reload, this is this is like Soviet levels of reload. So it's almost as bad as the um, as the imaginary American battleship line. So I'm going all gone all, all out for the guns here, and getting the main battery reload down and a bit better turret traverse, although that's not bad to begin with. And I'm also using the main battery mod two in order to get the reload down even further. You can uh, you can play with the uh, with the precision module, but uh, it's a 7% uh, uh, dis dispersion decrease. The dispersion is a bit trollish, and you often find that with the uh, with the quarter uh, with the quadruple turrets, that uh, things can you know fly a little bit in all directions at times. But uh, it's not going to completely compensate for that. So uh, I personally like to throw more 
throw more lead down range and some of it will stick. Uh, I still have the deck protection mod in here on, on a second because yeah, fire flooding resistance is not great on these things. And I've got the steering in three, so traditional setup for at least for my taste in these things here. I have uh, I have actually not upgrade, uh, upgraded the commander to level nine just because you know there's not a huge difference. Um, and I think I just forgot I'll try to be honest. But uh, we've, we've still got, given that uh, we don't have a precise aiming now, somebody mentioned in the comments last video that uh, the tier 10, um, the Cristoforo Colombo, will get a precise aim. So you might have to revisit this. So keep this in mind that I don't know yet what the tier 10 has. So you may need the uh, marksman skill and maybe the fire supremacy as well if, you, if you're so inclined to get that. So be careful with these. Otherwise, you have to reset your captains. Uh, I still have to look into the Mistweaver because, again, also somebody mentioned that the um, the Mistweaver skill doesn't apply to fuel smokes. So I'll, I'm going to go investigate that later this week uh, to determine that once and for all and see if it works or if it, if it doesn't. But yeah, other than that, uh, no surprises here. Um, also, somebody was, was asking if uh, the legendary commanders would make sense here. Um, the, the difference in alpha damage between the AP and the SAP is not great, right? I mean, we're talking 50 points of damage here or something. It's it's not a huge amount. So uh, you you I don't I wouldn't on a battleship caliber I probably wouldn't go for the SAP uh, penetration increase because uh, it is a relatively low caliber and we are getting into tier 10 and. I would it or they already have a very good penetration, so I would rather just double down on that, get the APCS skill, and um, you know do as much damage as possible. Most of the time against battleships, I'll be using the armor piercing anyway. The uh, SAP is really just there against cruisers and um, and especially destroyers. So yeah, that's that. Okay, uh, camo wise, we do have if you want to keep a tier nine ship around because tier nine matchmaking can be a bit interesting. Uh, you can get the historical camo, which gives us hit points. Uh, it increases the range, which is always nice to have. It uh, improves the dispersion and better torpedo damage reduction, which is all good because especially in this ship that has a 30% base torpedo damage reduction. This combination, so, right, so the combination of fuel smoke, great torpedo damage reduction, and uh, and the semi armor piercing skills makes these things absolutely deadly against destroyers. So uh, destroyers, if you're rushing these and you think British battleships were bad, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> this thing's got 12 guns on it, okay? And it's got a blistering array of secondaries, especially the big 150s, because it's now got six on each. Uh, it's now got the six of those. So uh, be very very careful with these things uh they are they are murderous against destroyers and you'll be hard pressed to to sink them with torpedoes easily because of the torpedo defense system uh yeah somebody was joking as well that i call everything about a cruiser well this isn't quite one thing that i sort of enjoy about these ships is a, is a good brawl honestly um because of the ship skills they are quite versatile once again they're, they're reasonably quick. Uh, the reload is on the long side, but you can use these fuel smokes quite effectively to get yourself into positions where you other, otherwise wouldn't survive getting into. And then you might not survive get long enough to get out of it again, but for sure you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So <laughs> um, I, I've brawled three Yamatos in this and sunk one. So it's possible. <laughs> not for very long, but uh, it, it's, still, it's still great fun. So yeah. Anyway, uh, enough talk, let's fight and uh, see the Lepanto in action in what is often a bit of an unfavorite matchmaking in tier 9. And yeah, here's what I mean with uh, occasional unfavorable matchmaking, because the, we are obviously in a tier 10 game, and that happens a lot in tier 9. Unfortunately, we're playing cage and center control, and we're up against Montana, Georgia, Iowa, Izumo, and Fletcher. I'm not counting the bots, because... Uh, once again, the matchmaking is very aggressive with actually, you know, getting you into games quicker. In ba a while back, or a couple of updates back, it would could take you sometimes a minute or a minute and a half, and it would take a really long time. But now they've gone a little bit far the other direction, and oftentimes you find yourself in a battle after 10 seconds, which is great, but half of the enemy team is made of bots, which isn't. So we'll just ignore them. We're not counting them. It's a 5v5. 
but we're up in cage center control. So uh, the only destroyer really that we have to worry about is the Fletcher, which means that everything else is going to get a good dose of armor piercing from this thing. Uh, no carriers, which is which is always nice, but uh, we're going to get ourselves into the capture circle and see what we can do. Now, you can sort of um, just play bow in, but it is a very big ship, so um, you, you'll oftentimes find that uh, you will you will take fire um, and uh, it's, it's often better to just be mobile than try to play this thing stationary. But uh, let's get ourselves into the cap, cir cap circle. I have the armor piercing loaded because I'm not going to see the Fletcher. Uh, and because we don't have a carrier. So unless that Venom over there manages to scout him, then uh, I'm not going to have anything to shoot at Fletcher wise. We do have a Kaba as well, so all good things. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to be next to that island in my favorite position over there. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what we can take under fire. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be cautious. You do have to somewhat preserve your health. And um, yeah, don't don't be disappointed by the relatively low base range of these things. Uh, the uh, the scout plane gets it up to 15, I think 15.7 kilometers. Okay, we've got the bot Zhao over there, so I'm going to do some shots out, but that's not my primary target. I just want to get it out of the way, because these things tend to set fires. And there we have a Monty to shoot at, and a Georgia. So, um, and yeah, I am, I'm taking return fire, which is to be expected, and ow, that hurt. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think we've seen the Fletcher. So, but we are in the capture circle. I'm using the plane not to extend the range, just to get a better view here across the island. There is an Izumo over there, so I don't want to inch out any further than that. And you can always use the... Ow! Yeah, you can always use the... Uh, that's tier 10 battles for you. You can always use the smoke if you really need to disengage. So I'm just backing off a little bit now that my team is caught up. And I do have the range. I mean, I don't need it right now because I'm still within the base range. But I, I would have still had the range with the scout plane to um, to hit them a little bit further away. Okay, the Georgia is coming under concentrated fire and is sort of backing away a little bit. So uh, farewell, uh, farewell shots at him. But we are holding the capture circle, and obviously the bots are charging straight up, ahead, straight ahead, because that's what bots do. And the, my, my team is inside the capture circle, which is a really, really pleasant surprise. I mean, you, oftentimes this doesn't happen, but um, my team really likes doing this, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, that's a bot Izumo, I think. And there's an Izumo on the left flank. And we've just lost something. Uh, they, yeah, there's there's the Fletcher as well. So I'm um, just, just making sure, because nobody is holding the left flank, and our Khabarovsk is sort of sailing around the other end there. So I am smoking up here. Uh, just because I am attracting a lot of fire. It's not, I, I know it's a fuel smoke and I can take it with me, but um, right now I'm more in a stationary uh, play and I just want to also give a smoke to, uh, possibly give a smoke to that battleship next to me. Let's get that Izumo out of the way because we are being outflanked from the left. So I'm reversing here to get, uh, to get my nose out and uh, turn the ship around. Yeah, because we have an Izumo of ourselves. So there is an Izumo and, um, okay, the Kaba has managed to sink one of the bots, well done. Uh, and there is also the was it a Fletcher I think there's one of our destroyers back there but um, I'm not sure if uh, if the Benham can can get this done I mean Benham is a, is a great destroyer but uh, I'm gonna go and help out because our Izumo is is uh, yeah the Benham just got blapped in the side pretty badly our, uh, and yeah there's Fletcher and Izumo coming so uh, first things first we need to sink that Izumo so I'm a piercing it is and the game bugs out and doesn't record my my shells so let's try that again that's better <laughs> Uh, he's in secondary range, so don't forget about these secondaries. There's a lot of them, and we need to kill these. The Izumo before we deal with the Fle uh, with the Fletcher. Fortunately, he's not looking at me. But one more salvo should do it. So I'm getting ready to switch over to the uh, semi armor piercing because Fletcher is coming my way. So I'm just backing off here. Okay, that should be the end of the Izumo. Uh, not quite. That was that was the dispersion saying no, and RNG just said, <laughs> RNG just giveth and taketh taketh away. But uh, we're getting him anyway with the secondary. So now obviously we have a Fletcher charging us. So scout plane up. Uh, there he is. Okay, that was just in case he was sitting behind the island. And I am reversing. I think he dropped torpedoes right about now. But look at that. <laughs> yeah, you don't do that. Okay, now I'm just going to need to turn the ship to the right, very briefly, well done, yes, there come the Fletcher Torps, they're all going to miss. Uh, that's one set, did you not get to fire a second set? Entirely possible. Anyway, back to the armor piercing, because we have no further use for the SAP, 
that Zhao is just a bot, so we don't really care. So fire the ship up. I'm still good on hit points. I have burned through two heals, but that's fine. Um, the, the Izumo looks like he's been going too aggressive. He should have stayed next to the island, honestly, and probably let me take point a little bit, but I was busy dealing with a uh, battleship and, uh, and a destroyer coming around our flank. The Kava is in the middle. He is on low health as well, so this can still go either way, even though uh, they will have to kill, because the Venom is also on super low hit points. They will have to kill us all. But that's not out of the uh, realm of possibility. So uh, currently, my, due to my range, don't have a good shot at the Georgia. Uh, there's the Iowa, but yeah, our Izumo has has um, our Izumo has gone too far forward. So now it's a point where I'm going to go and brawl and just trade my hit points and try to draw fire and try not to die because we we're down to three. Um, it's uh, so, so uh, smoke up, heal, last heal. And there's a Montana. Montana is more dangerous, so uh, nose towards the Monty and shots out at the Iowa, who is going to have to blind fire me at this point. He's using his secondaries. I might go around the island. Uh, my smoke should dissipate relatively soon, but uh, it is a pretty long lasting fuel smoke, so they're wasting their precious, precious salvos. Monty's on half health, I might be able to get a shot out at him. Uh, I'm not sure if Kaba wants to go for the top drop. No, he, he, he just wants to run away. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm almost full health. There's no way they're going to sink me in, in a minute. And uh, they're not also holding the capture circle. Even if they were, it wouldn't help them at this point. So yes, please keep shooting at me. Ignore, ignore my low health destroyers. Uh, just keep shooting at me. And uh, once again, nose in towards the Monty and shots out at the Iowa. Because uh, Monty is the bigger threat, obviously. And... Um, well, we'll see how we'll see how much we can still do, but uh, the main point here is that I'm not going to die, and uh, they would have to they would have to be extremely lucky. Okay, uh, I think the Iowa has realized what I was doing and stopped shooting at me because he knows that he can't kill me in 20 seconds. But uh, yeah, good job. So I've just got the Monty here. I can get some shots in the side of the Monty still. And um, yeah, he's not gonna he, unless he gets extremely lucky. Nah, he's not. They have got 35,000 hit points. He's not gonna kill me. See, that's the thing. And yes, that hurts, but um, you're out of time, friends. You're out of time. <laughs> so um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, preserve your health because you don't have an awful lot of it. But um, if you know that you that that you have a chance, then uh, don't be afraid to get into a brawl in these things. Now, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we haven't really seen it against the Fletcher here, but uh, the semi armor piercing against destroyers is absolutely positively murderous. So um, let's uh, let's give that a good try, shall we? <laughs> because in the second battle. We are up against Musashi, Smolensk, Minotaur, Shima, Fletcher, and Benham. Okay, and it's Hourglass. So um, we, we do have an Ibuki and a Buffalo, but um, well, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm fully prepared to play Cruiser if I have to. And, and hold, hold the left flank here and see uh, what comes down this way. Because the destroyers are either coming around the flank or coming through the center. But more often than not, you'll find them out in the flank. And uh, our destroyers are to, on the other side. I do have an Ibuki with me, but I'm not extremely certain that that Ibuki is actually there. Might be lagging or might be AFK, we don't know yet. Maybe maybe he'll still join the battle. And for now, we'll leave, uh, we'll leave her on the semi armor piercing with three destroyers, most definitely. And the other thing that uh, we can, that the semi armor piercing is very, very good at is things like Smolensk. Because um, uh, armor piercing tends to over penetrate Smolensk. The semi armor piercing, not so much. <laughs> so if you've got a clear shot out of the Smolensk, um, yeah, that's fun too. Uh, but for now, we've got a Shima. So uh, let's say hello to Shima. And I should be out of his torp range. Yeah, that's about a third of the Shima gone, and that was only four hits. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, he, he's not having a good good start. Um, there's the Smolensk. So and this is probably about as far as I want to go forward. And uh, where's Smolensk going? Smolensk goes undetected. He might be smoking up. So I'm contemplating firing at the Yamato, but that'd be a waste of shot. Yeah, there he. Okay, so he's shooting. He's stationary, and he's made the cardinal error of shooting first and smoking second. And I think he got lucky there because that actually hit the Yamato. <laughs> so I think the lock on was. Um, the lock-on wasn't quite working as I wanted it to there, but I, I mean, I, I can see where he is. 
So we'll just heal up that first fire damage. And yeah, there are some torpedoes. Uh, I knew they were coming. Yeah, it's a bot Yamato, but I can't see the Smolensk, which means that these shots are, aren't, aren't going to hit because it was locking on. And yeah, it's a double fire from the, Yama, uh, from the Smolensk, so we put that out. Uh, there's a destroyer here, people. Uh, where's my cruiser? Uh, where is he? Uh, he seems to be just sitting there. Oh no, he's shooting at the bot. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, uh, so that's not help helpful, but we've also got Chima over here. And there's the Fletcher. And he's in reverse. Yeah, yeah, he's in reverse. Uh, and yeah, that's what I mean. If you can, if you can hit a Smolensk properly, <laughs> Smolensk is not having a good time. Okay, but now I have Fletcher problems. So uh, he's going forward. There might be torpedoes already in the water. So let's just slow down a bit and give the Fletcher the good news. Now, to be fair, uh, these players probably never seen one of these things things before. Oh, and he got so lucky that he t he made the turn and only got hit by one. But um, Okay, Shima and Fletcher are coming for me, so it's time to put the engines on full. I smoke up so I can't be locked on with torpedoes, so they don't actually know where I am. Which gives me enough time to reload the guns and uh, and get some shots out. Uh, this is, uh, don't, don't underestimate secondaries. Shima goes into the Fletcher smoke, so I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm just gonna see... wait for them to come out again. Because I can't see them and I don't want to waste my shots, but where are you? Just using the secondaries to try to determine where they are. Okay, one of them is right there. Could blind fire him right now, but uh, okay. The, the Shima comes out pretty much dead on broadside, 6 km range. Uh, good night, Mr. Shimakaze. <laughs> and that's that thing. Okay, that's gonna hurt because these are Shima Torps. But uh, remember, 30% uh, torpedo damage reduction. So while it's gonna hurt, it's not gonna kill me. And uh, that's the flood, that's why I've been waiting with my Damacon. And now, Mr. Fletcher, you are maybe somewhat out of torpedoes. And you are also on extremely close range, so good night, Mr. Fletcher. <laughs> yeah, um, obviously people don't know yet what these things can do, because um, you don't see them that often around. But yes, if you're a destroyer player, so yeah, no... no uh, um, <laughs> No, no blame here, but if you're a destroyer player and you see an Italian battleship that is aware that you're there and has the semi armor piercing loaded, then um, yeah, uh, don't. Don't get anywhere near these things because that is absolutely murderous what they can do with the SAP. But yeah, we're down to, there's one enemy ship left, so there's not much else to do here. Uh, yeah, we've played cruiser role and held the flank against the two, da two, two dangerous destroyers, so uh, that was all... That was all pretty good, but yeah. So it's the um, it's the semi armor piercing, the fuel smoke, and the fact that these things have Japanese levels of torpedo damage reduction, <laughs> and you can't easily one shot them uh, if uh, if if they manage to dodge at least some of your torpedoes, and they are pretty maneuverable as well. So uh, these ships are um, can can switch to cruiser roll if they need to, but uh, definitely. Um, and, and they've got the scout planes, which I haven't used here, right? So I, I could have used the scout plane as well earlier just to get a bit more uh, vis visibility. I had a relatively good idea where the destroyers were anyway, so it uh, wasn't quite needed. But yeah, um, this is this is a good ship. It's a tier 9, and tier 9 is always a bit questionable, but um, I've obviously been up against tier 10 ships, and the, the 381 millimeters can definitely hold their own. We're waiting for the Cristoforo Colombo, which should, by all intents and purposes, if we're looking at PC, be the tier 10 ship. And uh, we're probably in for some more of the same guns, just more turrets of them. And yeah, uh, this is fun. I like these ships. And uh, they can they can play even at long range with the scout plane if they need to extend their base range. Uh, they are relatively mobile. They are absolutely disgustingly dangerous against destroyers. And... Uh, this is outright fun to play, in my opinion. They can brawl on a whim. The, they are not as squishy as, say, a British or a French battleship. So uh, I still maintain that this is a ver line that I'm very, very much looking forward to. And uh, it has its own niche. And it's not it, it's not cannibalizing other lines. Like, it's not yet another HE spammer or yet another um, fast battleship, poor armor, rapid reloading guns sort of, sort of range. That would just literally be a competition for the British or the French. No, it's really its own thing. 
And um, this is always something that I, I much, much enjoy if a certain line of ships has its own playstyle. So, uh, yeah, this is a good tier 9 ship, in my opinion, as, as good as tier 9 battleships can get and um, can hold her own in a tier 10 game if necessary. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> so uh, still very much looking forward to it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.